data in its exact form and that's why you extract the data and load it first so it is extraction loading hello friends welcome to itk fund day your own channel where we make it interesting for everyone so in this video we'll do something different so far in our google cloud platform beginner series we have been understanding various products and technologies which are provided by google cloud but in this video we will understand that how you can design your data pipelines and your data warehouse architecture on google cloud so it will help us in two ways first of all it will touch base upon certain products which we will use to define and design the whole data pipeline and data warehouse design within google cloud and we will try to understand an overview of these products in the capacity of this video and secondly it will help us improve our design thinking in a way that we are more uh, confident while designing our solutions on google cloud now by no means i am saying that this solution would be the perfect solution there are better ways to design anything any problem statement and it depends from person to person but i am trying to put here a very generic design of uh, an etl data pipeline and data warehouse design on prem and then the same design how it can be replicated on google cloud so i hope this will be an interesting video for you to learn from and uh, this would be a learning experience for me too so without wasting any more time let's get started please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so friends now let's understand how an etl design and an edw design on premise within our premises uh looks like okay this we have covered to an extent in our data pipeline video so if you have not watched it go check that out but today we'll we'll understand it in context with a uh, google cloud platform so friends on my left we have all the different types of uh, disparate data sources which we have in any enterprise uh, we have uh, real time data sources as well as we have batch uh, type data sources so what are real time real time data sources are the sources which are generating data very very quickly in 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 the matter of milliseconds and these uh, you know these events which are happening uh, needs to be streamed somewhere and uh, you know in real time uh, this data needs to be inserted and this data is generally called as unbounded data why unbounded because there is no boundary to this data how much data will be generated for how long it will be generated there is no boundary to it it is real time it can continue to generate data every millisecond every hour every week every day every you know every every day of the year so there is there is no boundary to it so this kind of data what what, what can be the example of it uh, suppose an application uh, there is a front end application which tracks uh the user registration on on your platform so as soon as any new user comes in and sign up to your uh, application and creates a login uh, there needs to be an event which uh, needs to be triggered these events could be countless because there could be millions of users coming to your website so this kind of data is generally uh, considered as uh, real time streaming data uh, also sensor data so suppose if uh, you know there is some uh, iot sensor device which is generating the data every every second then those kind of sensor uh, data also uh, is uh, considered as real time so this kind of data uh, can be you, uh, you know can be streamed using uh, apache uh, kafka and this kafka message broker I have, i have created a detailed video on kafka so to know the basics of it you can check that video but to understand uh, in a general way kafka is a message uh, broking service wherein you can you know you have a topic and on that topic there would be a producer and a subscriber so that producer of uh, the event will continue to send the data and that data will continue to reside in this particular uh, kafka message queue and then uh, based on you know the subscribers uh, who are who has subscribed to that particular message uh, you know those subscriber can pull the message as and when they want okay so this is real time now what is batch batch i think you all already know so it could be any traditional oltp system which is residing on prem and in this case i have taken an oracle system it could be your uh, sales or inventory database your marketing database a very very normal oltp database considered uh, to be an oltp system and that's why we have bounded data batch data or bounded data which we fetch from these systems because there is a specific time and a specific limit to which we take the data and we take the data into chunks that's why it is called as batch data because we are taking it into batches 
Similarly, there are third party data sources as well. How? Suppose this company has multiple vendors and suppliers who want to send the data, uh, maybe in CSVs or Excel files. Those third party files need to be FTP'd to an FTP server and then, you know, it can be stored to be picked up. Now we discuss all the three. Now, which particular technology does the this whole uh, job of uh, fetching the data and loading its software? I think we have understood it before also. It is extraction, transformation and loading which is called as ETL. And uh, in our case, the ETL tools are plenty. Uh, but generally, I have, I have rated the three which I have worked on. So it could be, you know, other ETL tools also. So Informatica, SAP Data Services, IBM Data Stage, all these ETL products. Uh, play that crucial role of fetching the data from the system be it real time or be it uh, batch data and then it takes this particular data and then it loads it into uh, your enterprise data warehouse uh, and in inside your enterprise data warehouse you could have multiple staging layers so uh, you know multiple layers so in this case it is uh, first layer would be staging layer where you will store your raw data completely raw data and then there will be some transformation layer will, where you will apply the business logic and eventually there will be a final loading layer where you will load the data which you exactly want. And in this case, in our case, this is, uh, this is being done on a Teradata uh, database. And this Teradata database is playing a role of our uh, enterprise data warehouse. Once this whole cycle, uh, you know, is finished, eventually what you have is you have your enterprise data warehouse where you have data from desperate systems and then based on your requirement as an end business user or maybe a data scientist uh, or maybe a data analyst, you will have different data marts coming out of it. So what is a data mart? Data mart is a very, very specific business specific, uh, you know, um, entity uh, which stores the data for uh, serving a specific need. So this could be your whole enterprise data, but then you could have your specific sales data mart which caters to uh, the sales uh, related uh, dashboard or sales re related analysis which uh, the business wants to do. Similarly, you can have data sets for your machine learning algorithms uh, to be formed and then you can have your operational reporting also. So all those kind of different uh, use cases can be derived out of this data mart. So this is a very general, very, very simple way of uh, seeing uh, how, how we can have uh, an ETL platform and an EDW design within on-prem. Again, very simple design. Uh, in normal world, it can go very complex, but we are understanding the concepts here. So I'll keep it very, very simple. So now we know how on-prem uh, is designed. Now, if we take this same solution and try to match products within Google Cloud, which will best suit this requirement and maybe provide some additional functionalities, which we do not have in our on-prem solution. So what could be those products and what could be our solution to it? So uh, let's design our Google Cloud based solution for the same enterprise and the same setup. So friends, now let's understand how we can uh, create the same solution on Google Cloud platform. As we discussed on the left, we have our real time data sources our, and our batch data sources. But now in order to stream data, real time data, we will use Google Cloud PubSub, which is uh, an asynchronous uh, message broking service, uh, which will create, as I said, something what Kafka does. It will create a topic and then there will be messages sent uh, from the producers and then the consumers will uh, subscribe to that topic and get that, uh, you know, uh, get those events stored. Uh, so this will be served from uh, Google Cloud PubSub. I will give the link of each of these products in the description below so you can go and explore every product uh, in, in detail. Now comes a very interesting part which is how the batch works. So for Oracle it is very clear that we can directly fetch the data but for third party instead of using FTP server what we can do is we can use GSUtil which is a command line utility for Google Cloud Storage. Uh, Google Cloud Storage uh, is a is an object based storage where you can uh, store data, uh, store objects of any format. It could be videos, it could be files, it could be XMLs, JSON. So Google Cloud Storage has massive capabilities and it has 99.99999% uh, availability. It's highly resilient. So Google Cloud Storage could be used to store these files into Google Cloud Storage buckets. And we can use GSUtil as a command line utility. Again, 
I am just giving you this solution but as I said this solution can vary from situation to situation from uh, person to person but I have, I have just tried replacing all the products which we were using on-prem with somewhat similar products on Google Cloud. So we will put uh, all our files on Google Cloud Storage. Now coming to our most important part. In 2019 Google Cloud launched its uh, zero code uh, ETL product which is called as data fusion. Now as you know that Google has various different uh, uh, products already uh, for data processing and data analytics. But most of these products were high on programming, high on coding. Now it was very difficult for ETL developers, uh, you know, who were who were busy designing their ETL jobs on a product which was low code uh, to directly go and start coding on, you know, maybe Python or you know Java. Uh, it was very good for programmers. Now Google understood that, and Google is now bringing the products which can be used with minimal uh, programming knowledge. And one such product which is very interesting is Data Fusion. Uh, Data Fusion is a UI based product and you can design your uh, you know ETL data flows, uh, you can you know have your streaming data and the batch data everything designed uh, in, in this particular product and then uh, you know the rest of the job because it is a managed service uh, the rest of the job is done by Google Cloud. Underline this particular data fusion uh, product, there is an open source CDAP project which uh, you know which has been utilized. And also once you design your whole ETL data flows, underline it generates uh, you know the Apache Spark and data proc uh, you know uh, clusters so that you know the data flows and the data could uh, you know could be processed in massive speed. But we don't have to go into those uh, technicalities if we know what we want from this particular data pipeline. So as an ETL de developer, Data Fusion could be very, very intuitive product for you if you are, uh, if you are not uh, from a programming background. Now, apart from Data Fusion, we can also use Data Flow. But as I said, Data Flow is, uh, you know, high on programming uh, product and that's why you need to have advanced programming skills to design your data flows. But underline, I think, uh, you know, uh, pretty much it utilizes Google Cloud infrastructure. So it hardly uh, matters if you are, you know, if you are confident that, okay, you can design your data flows without uh, the need of uh, programming, then I think Data Fusion is a well suited product for you. Data storage again will come into picture because now this ETL tool will fetch the data from all these different disparate sources and it will load the data somewhere. Now why I have chosen storage again here is because Google Cloud storage is very very uh, proficient in storing the data and archiving the data and if you go by the data lake concepts which I have mentioned here also you would always want to retain your raw data in its exact form and that's why you extract the data and load it first. So it is extraction, loading and then transformation. That's, that's the way it works in a data lake. But what I'm trying to say is that, uh, you know, cloud storage could be a perfect place to first bring your data in, store it there. So it will be there uh, for, you know, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. It will be in that raw form. So anytime you want to go back into history and find out what was there and what kind of analysis needs to be performed, you can do that if you have your uh, storage storing the data as it comes. So once we have all the data stored in its raw form in your uh, you know Google Cloud Storage, it's time to go to a product which is the best product in my opinion uh, on Google Cloud for analytical workloads and for data warehousing solutions, and that is Google BigQuery because Google BigQuery can you know can store petabytes, terabytes, even exabytes of data, and then you can retrieve uh, retrieve it so so fast. And that's what you know uh, is so so good about BigQuery. And that's why you should always consider BigQuery uh, for your data warehousing solutions. And once you have a BigQuery uh, where you you know design your enterprise data warehouse, you can also derive your data marts within BigQuery itself. So the three data marts which we discussed can be derived once you have your enterprise data warehouse. And you know all the different layers uh, if you want to create your dimensional layer, you can create within uh, BigQuery. So you can create different data sets. Now I've created a separate video on BigQuery. So you can go and watch that for more detail. 
So once you have everything, every data mart, you can now look for different products. So now in our previous uh, like on-prem solution, we were using Tableau. We can use Tableau here as well. But just for your understanding, I have used Looker, which is uh, you know which is a company which has been now uh, bought by uh, Google, and this would uh, uh, you know let you create very very good uh, dashboards. Also, Data Studio, Google Data Studio is again a product which will uh, let you create your um, you know uh, analytical dashboards uh, very very quickly, uh, and it connects directly with your all the BigQuery data sets. Uh, so it's it's very easy and quick to use Google Data Studio to create uh, such dashboards and reports. And then for machine learning, you have Google Auto ML. Again, a huge topic in itself. But yes, you can utilize uh, the data coming into your data marts and put it into you know auto machine learning models. Uh, and then uh, you can uh, run your machine learning algorithms uh, from here. So this could be a perfect place for data scientists. Now apart from all that. I have put data catalog as well. Now Google data catalog is something which was not there. No, nothing was there re regarding this in our on-prem solution. Uh, and this is to do with your metadata management. Very often we do this mistake in on-prem uh, data warehouses that we continue to dump our data warehouses with enormous amount of data, but there is no place to maintain your data dictionary. The actual health of your data is not known and then it tends to create different dis data silos and data discrepancies. So in order to cater that we should always think and plan and use data cataloging right from the very beginning to define your metadata so that you exactly know your data lineage and exactly know what kind of data uh, is coming into your data warehouse. So in totality, this is how it looks if we want to design a solution on Google. And again, it could be built in a much better way. And there are various other products which could replace, you know, some of these products uh, which I have shown in this video. But this is to show you that how we can design and come up with innovative designs and solutions to replace something which was running within our premises and move it to Google Cloud. So friends, I hope you learned something from this video. I tried to bring solution design thinking in this. I tried explaining you how we can come up with innovative solution designs to bring our on-prem solutions and deploy it on Google Cloud. In future also, I'll try to bring such videos as we uh, together learn Google Cloud platform. So if you liked this video, please hit the like button so people know that there is something useful going on on this channel. Hit the bell icon and the subscribe button so you exactly know when I upload my next video. And yes, please keep showering all your love and support. I love to hear from you. Every comment of yours fills me with full of energy and joy. And I'll, I'll continue to share all this knowledge with you as, as, as and when I learn. So until then, please keep supporting. Please keep working hard. And yes, please keep hustling. Bye for now.